The method of reflection can be applied just as well to the heat equation. So let's take the heat equation also on a semi-infinite domain, so just for positive values of x, and we'll include uh, a homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition. So we're fixing the end of the bar to have temperature 0. Imagine holding an ice cube against it so it's fixed at 0. So um, what we can do, just like we saw in the last one, uh, is we can reduce this to a type of problem that we've already solved by making a substitution using the uh, odd extension of the function. So we'll look at the slightly different problem. So we'll define the initial condition to be psi of x. And now this is for the entire real line. And the idea here is that um, psi is the, the odd extension of phi. OK, and so now we have, um, this, is, this is something that um, we've already solved. So we'll be able to take our solution and then just restrict it. In other words, just only care about the part that's on the, uh, the positive axis. So let's see. So um, if we look at the solution from section 2.1, tells us that we need to take the convolution of the heat kernel with our initial condition. And then we know something about our initial condition. It takes different values on the positive and negative real axis. So let's split the integral into the positive and negative parts. Uh, so on this one, it's going to be negative. Oops, uh, that should be a y. And then on the positive x-axis, it's just good old phi. Ah, and again, that should be a y. Um, and so combining, and so combining this, we can write it as the integral from uh, zero to infinity of g x minus y t um, minus g of x plus y t against v of y. So I'm just making the uh, the u substitution um, or, or change of variables uh, minus y going to y in this first integral there. And then I can write it as one entire thing. And so like I said before, this um, works on the entire line. So in particular, it works for positive x if we just restrict attention to positive x. And um, I didn't mention this earlier, but I just wanted to point out that um, our solution u is going to be continuous. And the, um, the odd um, initial condition implies an odd solution. Uh, so by odd here, I just mean uh, with respect to the x variable. So in other words, u of minus xt is going to equal minus u of xt. And so one up offshoot of that is that if you evaluate at 0, you see that um, it has to be the case that uh, u of 0t is equal to 0. 
So the boundary condition that, that we were hoping for, that we wrote down back in the uh, very beginning, is enforced by the fact that we are using an odd function here. And even if, um, <coughs> even if say, uh, phi of 0 is not 0, um, so then the odd, so let's just do a little sketch of, whoops, what that might look like. Um, so if I had some, uh, uh, that was lousy. So if phi looks like something like that, then the odd extension of it will look something like this. And in particular, it will be discontinuous right here. However, um, u will be continuous. And so for any positive values of t, it will actually pass through the origin. So there's a figure in the book that looks something like this. I just thought I should explain it a little bit more. Um, the other thing to think about is what about other uh, boundary conditions? So for instance, what if you want to do Dirichlet instead of, uh, sorry, Neumann instead of Dirichlet? So in this case, we can uh, let psi of x be the even extension. So again here, um, if, if we're in the latter case, the x negative means that minus x is positive. So, so this expression is well defined again. And so this just mirrors it across the uh, vertical axis. So if you had something that looked like this, then its even extension would look like this. Um, so uh, if now um, psi is the even extension of phi. So it's an even function. And since it's an even function, its derivative is going to be an odd function. And so um, that will help us solve situations for if we need ux at 0 to be 0. <coughs> 